Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Sha, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Sha. All praise to Yahweh, Barashim Yahweh Sha. Now looking at this insurrection day, it's a a mirror and a perfect comparison on the intentions of these so-called white supremacists. And we know there's not there's no such thing as a white person. You've never seen a white person on the planet. The red peoples, the pinkish, uh, deriving from red. And so we know who their forefather is. Uh, Jacob's twin brother Esau, who came out red. That's to set the foundation. Now, when you look at the situation, they trying to act like, it's a major problem with white. They got a major problem with white supremacy. When at the at the same time, when you even look at the situation, why would a white person have a problem with somebody calling them supreme? Or have a problem with their own people saying we are supreme? First of all, you already ruling. So where was the threat? This is your kingdom. Where is the threat to your kingdom? White supremacy is not a threat to your kingdom because this is already a white supremacist kingdom. The kingdom is already built on white supremacy and ran by white supremacy. So why would a bunch of white supremacists be a problem to the kingdom? That, that gives you clear understanding that this is not a problem. What they're doing is they're trying to throw out that extremist and terrorist word around. So in order to throw that word around and to demonize a group of people by using that word, they throw the white supremacists out there and make you think that they have a problem with these people when you don't, you know. You don't have a problem with your people saying we supreme and knowing that we ruling. We are the top kingdom on the earth. We have the top military. Uh, our dollar, our currency is the top currency on the earth. 50% of our dollar is outside of our country. You see? So why in the world would we have a problem with somebody saying, or our own citizens saying that we are supreme and this is our country. You, you don't have a problem with that. Because at the same time, you're having people saying that God created us supreme. You see, the children of Jacob, God created us supreme. That we are special people above all people that are on the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. You see... That's why you coming up and acting like you worried about what somebody's saying when it comes to supremacy. See, you want to get that word out there. And when you're saying supremacy, you want to say this is extremist. They're extremists. Because your real beef is with the Israelites who are saying they're supreme. You see, that's your real beef. The Israelites are saying they're supreme, the so-called who you named blacks, you named them Hispanics, and you named them Native American. The white, the so-called white supremacists or the Edomites named them blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans when they really were e uh, Israelites and you knew that they were supreme because you had their records and you and the other nations knew that they was above you, uh, you guys, in the eyes of God. And God only punished his people. In Amos uh, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, let you know the children of Israel, you only have I known. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. So that's why these people are false flagging and setting up a situation against white supremacists because they're not worried about no white supremacy 
if I'm Chinese and, and people in my nation saying, we, us Chinese people are the greatest people around on earth, I don't have no problem with that. We just, you, are you giving me a compliment? Why am I have a problem with you giving me a compliment? No, don't tell me I'm supreme. You see, and they trying to act like they trying to fight for a country that they already own, that they already is in all the top position, the House of Representatives, the Senate, all white. Why would you have a problem? Why would you need to stand up and say anything and fight for anything that you already own? This your land, but you fighting, you fighting for something you already long own, got the deed for and everything. You gonna go to court and fight for it. No, that's a that's a setup. They sent them people and they the news came out that that thirty three of them, they used the Illuminati number, symbolism, thirty three police officers was involved in going up there to the Capitol Hill. So that tells you the whole story right there. But these people are false flagging and they acting like they got a problem with their own peoples when they don't. They got a problem with the Israelites saying, well, God chose us to be the greatest people and y'all kingdom finna fall. Because mind you, while this was going down, guess who was out there in the mix of all these people with a loudspeaker saying that you people that have committed crimes and you're going to have to pay for them just like we paid for our crimes of our forefathers. It's y'all time to pay for y'all crime. Right right while they're trying to run into the Capitol building, the Israelites are telling them on the scene that this is what's going on. And so that's what the situation is all about. And they're trying to use this false flag and push this across the media Cause they they still got soldiers over there all in the Capitol Hill area acting like it was a problem. It was not a problem. Y'all went in there and set that whole situation up so you can push this propaganda on the TV so now you can come up with legislation about religious extremists and uh, white, su white supremacists and supremacists and extremists, see, that's what you're really talking about. You're talking about the opposite side. The adversary to white is black. You made that the adversary, that terminology, but the, it's really the adversary to the Edomites is the Israelites. And that's your beef. That's where your beef lies. And it's been lying there since the beginning. Now let's go there and get that in um, Genesis. Uh, Genesis, let's see here, let's start at uh, 38, Genesis 27, 38, and Esau said unto his father, thou hast but one blessing, my father, bless me, even me also, O my father, and Esau lifted up his voice and wept, and he went to cry. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of the heaven, meaning you're going to get the rulership. Verse 40, And by the sword shall thou live. Who has the greatest military on earth? The Edomites. And shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou hast have the dominion, the rulership, once you get the, dominion, the rulership, that thou shalt break the yoke break his yoke, meaning the Israelites' yoke, off of your neck. And this is the situation, 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. So this is the reason why the situation is going down. Let's jump back over to 40, 25, 23. Now, 23, the, the, the Edomites and the Israelites were struggling in the womb. They say in the 23, saying, The Lord 
said unto her, two nations are in that womb. That's the struggle. Not the same nation. Not these white supremacists fighting what Edomites fighting Edomites. That's not the problem. They're not worried about that. Two nations are in, are in thy womb, and two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. See, they, they know the end of that situation is going to be that they're going to have to serve us, the Israelites. That's where the problem lies. Not you... They worried about a white supreme. Somebody telling them, their own people telling them that we supreme in this our country. Why Why would you have a problem? That's not a problem. You got a country and your own people coming up and then saying, this is our country. This country belongs to us. Okay, okay. What is the conflict? That ain't, ain't no conflict. The conflict is that the Israelites saying that they are supreme. You see, that's why you're using this supremacists. You're pushing this white supremacist, and you've been doing that from the start. But now it's even greater. And let's get the situation. Second Ezra 6 and 9. It say, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. See, we bringing out this truth, and that's what got them want to false flag and demonize the truth and say it's extreme, it's, it's extremism, and say we preaching uh, hate and we pushing uh, so-called supremacist ideology, but it's not. <laughs> it's just the word of God. So. That's what's going on with these dragons. They not up there fighting. They uh, putting on a show. They were told to go up there. And there were a bunch of police officers and military soldiers told to go up there and act like they doing something. Trump told them out his own mouth. We gonna go up here and we gonna do such and such. You see, it's a clear operation. Not worried. White, white people not worried about no white supremacists, man. They never was. The Ku Klux Klan been out here forever. They never put nobody in jail. They never punished nobody. Made no laws against nothing that they doing. It never been a problem. Why is it a problem now? Nah, you see, because it's propaganda to set up the Israelites. But I'm gonna leave it there. All praise to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem and Kakadash. Double honor to the elders pushing the truth. Peace of the elect worldwide. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.